Here we are looking at tall Oregon grape, Mahonia aquifolium. It's found on drier sites in the Pacific Northwest. It likes a little bit of sun. The leaves kind of resemble the invasive English holly. They're glossy and they have spines on the edge. Oh, there's a bee. There's also a dull Oregon grape that's quite a bit shorter and that grows in second growth Douglas fir forests and it has duller leaves. They're not as shiny as these. Seven to nine leaflets grow on a tough stem and the flowers are bright yellow and the pollinators love them and they smell really good. And in about September or October, these bright yellow flowers will turn into clusters of blue berries. The blueberries have this whitish bloom on them. They are edible, but they're not very sweet. They have kind of big seeds in them. Indigenous peoples would mix them with salal, which is a sweeter berry, and that made them a little more palatable. Today, people like to make jelly out of them because they're high in pectin. And when you add sugar, takes care of the sweetness problem. The bark outside is a lightish gray color, but inside it's bright yellow because it contains this compound called berberine. And indigenous peoples would use the shredded bark to make a dye to color their basketry materials. The bark and the berries were used medicinally for liver, gallbladder, and eye problems. The quinault made a decoction of the roots that they took for coughs, and the cowlitz used an infusion of the bark as a wash for skin sores. This also happens to be the state flower of Oregon. And if you're at all familiar with the University of Oregon's sports jerseys, they match. Go Ducks!